So what led you to, uh, to write a book about the dam? The Dam Buster story has been around since 1943, 75 years now, and a lot of literature. Uh, Paul Brickhill's original book, of course, uh, Guy Gibson, who was the commander on the raid, wrote uh, Enemy Coast Ahead, and it's covered there. But what's missing for me, and it's missing in the movie too in 1955, is the fact that of the 133 airmen in the raid in the 19 Lancasters, a quarter of the crewmen, 30 Canadians, involved and nowhere is there reference to the Canadians and so I went searching for the stories and I found this guy second guy from the left Fred Sutherland who is living in Rocky Mountain House Alberta and I went and visited him spent several days with him and he began to tell me the story of his experience breaching the Eater Dam on that night of May 16th 17th 1943 that triggered it and then I began to realize that I've got to research the stories of dead Canadians too because there were 16 survivors 14 who died and so I was driven by the mental thought uh, that this is a great story the movie's been made the books have been written but not the Canadian version and that's what I set out to do great and uh, there was a lot of amazing moments in this story but what were some of the ones that just sort of surprised you or or, or impressed you as wow the Dan Buster story has so many extraordinary, I won't say flukes, but I would say coincidences and you know instant reasoning and calculation. I mean, even Barnes Wallace, who was designing the bouncing bomb and had to convince Churchill that this was a workable uh, possibility, breaching dams on the Ruhr River, right up until the last second, he was trying to convince people and working on the prototypes and getting Guy Gibson and the crews to change the altitudes to come down to 60 feet off the water. Uh, alter the speed to 235 miles per hour, um, make sure that they in, indeed could be 60 feet off the reservoirs, and all of the, the technical things that they came up with were kind of jerry-rigged because they had to do it, but they did it. So everything falls into place, including a moonlit night gives them a clear view all the way to the Ruhr, but when you look out your window today and look up maybe five or six stories in the apartment building next to you or maybe a 50 or 60 foot tree nearby, imagine Lancasters flying for seven and a half hours from England to the Ruhr Valley and back at that altitude and not a, an inch above it. I mean, it's just extraordinary. And these guys were 19 and 23 and 30 years old to accomplish this in one night. It's amazing.